Hey Youtubers, this is Lonnie Clark, and that's for art. And I'm going to make an effort to get through this book without coughing too badly, I hope. <coughs> um, I'm kind of fighting a cold, so we'll see where we're at. We're on uh, Chapter 8. It's titled The Nuclear Legacy, Radioactive Waste and Plutonium. We're on page 193. The AEC has still not changed its practices, nor relocated its installations. The West Valley story demonstrates that the time for taking the committee's recommendations seriously has already passed. We have no adequate means of containing these low and intermediate level radioactive wastes, and the proliferation of nuclear reactors is only going to compound an already serious problem. And as we found out today on my radio show, uh, the AEC actually denied uh, their illegal activity that they did selling the Manhattan Waste Project uh, waste to a private company. It was really despicable. So let's get on because we're outlining just how inhumane the AEC, i.e. the NRC are. Everything but the squeal. That's the title of the new subtap, subtitle. When an industry like Armour has abundant byproducts, difficult or expensive to dispose of, it attempts to find a better market use of these. It attempts to find a better market use for these byproducts. The nuclear industry is no exception. Again, consider the 1969 report of the AEC, the nuclear industry, in which the following can be found. <coughs> the subtitle. Useful byproducts from reactor waste. Fission products such as strontium, cesium, and promethium, never heard of that, recovered during irradiated fuel processing operations are, are already finding some useful commercial applications such as industrial thickness gauges, food irradiators, teletherapy units as a power source in remote weather stations, etc. Others, such as, such as xenon, krypton, rhodium, and palladium, are being considered for recovery because of their potential use in the electrical, jewelry, oil, and chemical industries. Possible markets for the expanded use of these materials in the new future offer challenging opportunities. Late in 1968, the AEC announced that Richland Operations Office would seek expressions of interest from industry in the recovery of fission products, rhodium, palladium, and tectanium from the Hanford high-level waste. See AEC Public Release L252, dated October 31, 1968. Considerable interest was indicated by several firms, and one, PPG Industries, is exploring the possibilities of recovering these fission products by a proprietary process using a sample of the Hanford waste. Of particular interest in the byproduct category is Neptunium, which is used in the target material in the production of Plutonium-238. It is possible that at some future date there will be a very large demand for plutonium-238 for use as a power source in our space program, and, there could, and also there could be large demands for the artificial heart program if it is successful. General Electric is offering to recover neptunium as well as uranium and plutonium from irradiated nuclear fuel at its chemical reprocessing plant being constructed at Morris, Illinois. Nuclear Fuel Services, Inc., New York State Atomic and Space Development Authority, and all other companies with interest in the chemical reprocessing reprocessing business are giving serious considerations to this and other to isotopes for which a market and economic conditions justify recovery. And that's from the Nuclear Industry. It's a magazine, 1969, op citation, pages 266-267. There are about a hundred firms that produce radioisotopes and convert them into products for medical 
science, and industry use. Total sales of these companies are estimated to be $53 million annually, consisting of about $8 million in basic radioisotope materials, $16 million in radiochemicals, $25 million in radiopharmaceuticals, and $4 million in radiation sources. In addition, sales of devices in which radioisotopes are employed total about $40 million a year. Like the, uh, what is it, $5,000, $6,000 uh, radio gamma spectrometer that we want to get for RADNET. <coughs> if the sales of products produced by radiation processing, <coughs> auxiliary materials, and services related to radioisotopes and radiation uses are included. The total commercial activity in the United States is at a level of several hundred million dollars annually, unquote. <coughs> okay, let's see if I can get through the rest of this subchapter. A very large fraction of these radioactive byproducts will eventually find its way into the environment. In the process, some of these radioactive products will produce serious, immediate consequences. Consider the case of a young Mexican boy who found a cobalt-60 source. The source, highly radioactive, looked to him like a metallic marble, and he put it in his pocket. The radioactivity subsequently made him ill, and his mother put him to bed. She put the marble in the drawer in the kitchen. As a consequence, both the mother and the boy's little sister became so ill that the maternal grandmother came over to care for them. In the end, all four died. Other tragic examples are available. However, it is important to recognize that the unknown genetic consequences of introducing this radioactivity to man's environment will pale these examples by comparison. One of the major legacies of the nuclear age is radioactive waste. Discussions concerning the disposal of it are misleading because radioactive waste is not disposable. Read that again. Discussions concerning the disposal of it are misleading because radioactive waste is not disposable. Guardianship of nuclear waste is a more meaningful concept, i.e. the nuclear priesthood. <coughs> we are producing more waste products that must be maintained in isolation from the environment for a thousand years or more. The AEC does not appear to recognize this fact. New subtitle, Plutonium, the Ultimate Hazard. The worldwide inventory of plutonium is man-made. It is virtually non-existent in the Earth's crust before the U.S. atomic bomb program was initiated. This makes me want to spit nails. By far, the major use of plutonium today is the manufacture of nuclear bombs. Plutonium has several nuclides, the most important being plutonium-239, which is used in the manufacture of nuclear bombs. But plutonium-239 is intended as the major reactor fuel of the future, though the development of the fast breeder reactor, through the development of the fast breeder reactor, which was a known disaster, its extremely long half-life, 24,000 years, will keep plutonium-239's radioactive undiminished much longer than the recorded history of modern man. I don't know if you guys are with me, but man, this is insanity. These people know what they're doing. The cancer-producing potential of plutonium is well known. An amount as small as one ten millionth of an ounce, one ten millionth of an ounce injected under the skin of mice has caused cancer. A similar amount in injected into the bloodstreams of dogs has produced bone cancers. However, it is the lung that is the most vulnerable to plutonium. The vulnerability of the lung to plutonium exists because plutonium exposed to air ignites spontaneously. As it burns, it forms numerous tiny particles of plutonium dioxide. These particles are intensely radioactive. If inhaled, they are deposited into the deepest portions of the lung. <coughs> Speaking of the lung, I'm sorry, you guys. 
There they remain, immobilized for hundreds of days, and during this time, their radiation is able to affect the cancer-sensitive cells of the lung. The tissue around the particle is exposed to a very intense localized dose of radiation. Our colleague, Donald Giesemann, has made an extensive analysis of the scientific data related to the hazards of these highly radioactive particles. His analysis pointed up a very sobering fact. The experimental data indicated that when small portions of tissue are exposed to extremely high doses of radiation, cancer is an almost an inevitable result. It's going to ring six times, you guys. I'm going to keep going. In other words, irradiation by plutonium oxide, excuse me, in other words, irradiation by plutonium oxide particles appear to represent a unique carcinogenic hazard. Somewhere between a few and a few hundred such particles would be enough to double a person's chance of developing fatal lung cancer. An ounce of plutonium can form 10 trillion such particles. 10 trillion in one ounce. Let me read that again since the phone was ringing. His analysis pointed up to a very sobering fact. The experimental data indicated that when small portions of tissue are exposed to extremely high dosages of radiation, cancer is an almost inevitable result. In other words, irradiation by plutonium oxide particles appears to represent a unique carcinogenic hazard. Somewhere between a few and a few hundred such particles would be enough to double an individual's chance of developing fatal lung cancer. An ounce of plutonium can form 10 trillion such particles. In the air, these tiny particles remain suspended for long periods of time. <coughs> Thus, plutonium released into the environment will represent a very long-term and serious hazard. Plutonium fires have occurred at the Rocky Flats Plutonium Plant in Colorado that is operated by Dow Chemical Company. <coughs> plutonium is measurable in the soil surrounding the plant. If the plutonium industry burgeons, we can expect more and more such contamination. I'm going to stop on uh, page 198 on the first paragraph, mostly because I'm about to start hacking my brains out. So um, I'm going to post again tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be better. I'm taking some homeopathic junk that probably will knock it out. So put your courage feet on, you guys. And um, thanks for all your support. Thanks for listening to this book. Thanks for caring about our planet. And put your courage feet on, man. We definitely need it. We have seen exactly how the nuclear industry works to separate us and have us chomping at each other. And uh, I'm proud of us for not doing that. And I'm proud of us for, like, being sane and actually focusing on the monsters, nuclear power plants, the people that are killing our planet. So, ciao. Bye.